so good morning one and all it is a privilege to introduce uh, the first speaker of this uh, short term course uh, he is uh, mr sv anjaneelu i would like to read out his uh, profile in brief uh, sri sv anjaneelu is a graduate in agricultural science from acharya ng ranga agricultural university and an mba in agri business from iim ahmedabad he is a dupont certified six sigma black belt and a trained data scientist over is having over 20 years of corporate experience in sales marketing six sigma and digital in, in, initiatives with bow dupont and bayer engaged in business of crop protection chemicals seeds and plant nutrition the last corporate stint was as a director global mns excellence in 2015 he had the opportunity of designing and implementing digital platforms b2b and b2c in around 20 countries he started entrepreneurial journey in 2015 with i2v consulting private limited main idea is to develop trained and technology empowered agronomist to improve the precision advisory ecosystem for small holder agriculture he has trained and deployed around 1000 agronomists across 20 states in india He has currently expanded the scope to developing drones for addressing use cases in agriculture, and setting up infrastructure to train drone pilots. Apart from agronomists, to support the drone revolution in agriculture, he is developing a concept of flying IOTs using drones to acquire data from inaccessible places in terms of terrain and time to augment on-ground IOTs for precision agriculture. apart from this uh, mr anjaneelu i know him personally he is a great human being and he is ready to reach out and help anybody of us and he is not only a good friend of uh, friend of mine but also related to me and lastly is happy to inspire the students to develop a passion for agriculture i request uh, mr sv anjaneelu to kindly take over the session thank you very much uh, thank you very much dr kondaya and thanks uh, dr jay kiran uh, for giving this opportunity to me um, i am pleased to uh, be here and you know talk to the students uh, my my motivation is uh, very simple and uh, clear my motivation is uh, even if i can inspire one student to think about agriculture and uh, and contribute uh, the engineering wise uh, to the cause of agriculture i have been uh, talking to many students and uh, it is time it is uh, time that engineers uh, come over and uh, take lead in making agriculture easy uh, that, that's the uh, call of the day uh, i am not going to keep it very complicated uh, i am going to kind of just give you some snippets of how uh, uh, snippets which would inspire um, anybody to think of various use cases in agriculture a lot of material is available on uh, youtube for that matter uh my session will uh, i'll be happy to open the session for question and answers uh, much early because uh, the more uh, questions come uh, the more precise uh, knowledge can be shared now i will uh, share my screen to just have a lead of the discussions what we are going to have uh Uh, am i am i your the screen is not visible sir please share the screen oh uh, just a minute i think i am is uh, is the screen shared now no sir yeah now it is visible sir okay okay great yeah so um, 
very quickly uh, i mean the whole presentation uh, uh, we will mostly discuss these kind of things uh, i have also organized a very short video i mean it's not really short it's like 17 minutes video uh, which is a very similar work which microsoft is undertaking and it is very interesting to know because uh, that is what needs to be replicated in all the uh, small farms okay so let me proceed uh, a very housekeeping thing uh, i mean to understand what we are talking of in terms of iot earlier uh, we had landline phones and now we have smartphones now whenever a thing is connect uh, connected with internet it is becoming smart so smart phones smart tvs uh, smart cars driverless cars and uh, smart tech tractors um, it's uh, so so Uh, very important that you know we are we have to make these things smart now all these things have becoming smarter in every area other than agriculture it's very important that we must think of making things in agriculture smarter now iot the backbone of iot is sensors very important because in agriculture all the decisions are based on some data now this data can be acquired by sensors i mean there are some sensors already available where something is being used already it's not that uh, no iot is being used currently in agriculture but it's only the tip of the iceberg i mean uh, so much surface we scratched and it is only at the surface and so much that could be done um, as we go forward you'll understand that you know what uh, uh, what is the scope of uh, uh, iot in agriculture fundamentally uh, sensors are what are they doing they are actually converting the analog signals to digital and uh, getting that data to us there are actuators which are actually actioning upon uh, the data i mean the moment we collect the data we decide upon doing something based on the data we have actuators example could be uh, for a mechatronics guy it could be a servo motor uh, where you know i can open up a parachute uh, using that servo motor in my drones that's what i use actually and uh, all the supporting infrastructure which broadly kind of a, a clubs together as the iot hmm. now the moment i say agriculture let's let's do the top of the mind recall about agriculture uh, we did this exercise some time ago and we found out that these are the statements that come to top of our mind uh, when we say agriculture it's about labor it's about toiling it's about soil weather cattle water chemicals pests and diseases tractor harvest see if you look at these these words which come to our mind very unfortunate that agriculture does not present any pleasant perspective in the top of the mind i mean when you go deeper maybe you'll say oh, agriculture is food agriculture is happiness agriculture is greenery agriculture is like sustenance all those things but on the top of the mind recall it's fundamentally uh, fundamentally very difficult activity to pursue now that's how it has been for, for sure even today it is like that it is i mean unless you have large farms the amount of automation amount of mechanization uh, is not possible if you go to europe and us uh, you will see that you know the amount of automation that happens in agriculture is tremendous because there is no labor available there and because labor was available in india nobody thought of so much of automation not only that uh in india the farm sizes are not as large as uh, the american farm sizes uh, which i'll come to it later in the end because size also matters here now there's a lot of toiling there's a lot of soil and now all these uh, activities of in agriculture need some kind of a data first i have to retrieve some kind of a data from the field to actually take some decision what is currently uh, all along what was happening till now was this data was retrieved out of experience out of something called a person walking into the field checking the plants checking the crops coming back and deciding something this process technically is called scouting so this scouting was is mostly manually done and uh, it is uh, Uh, dependent on an experienced person to undertake that job and uh, you know decide upon the right activities to be done on the field now scout what is the body meant by experience here it is now i am not talking about experience of 3 to 4 years in fact somebody who lived in the crop for 10 15 years only knows the best way of scouting now such level of experience is not available now 
and secondly if we have to wait for such level of experience the agriculture will only slow down and the demand for agriculture products is increasing by geometric proportions it is not increased by even by arithmetic proportions it is a gp uh, urgency now if you see i just have quoted from very few examples i mean i can i can actually quote uh, hundreds of them uh, between what you want to sense and what kind of action you want to take i mean if, even if i sense the temperatures the microclimatic temperatures the temperatures which is under the uh, crop canopy and macroclimatic temperatures then at least one decision i can do is okay when to irrigate uh, i mean uh, precise time of irrigation because if i irrigate at the times which is not required by the crop that water is wasted and today we are uh, running short of water i mean we need to conserve this water big time similarly soil moisture if i also know what is the level of already existing soil moisture then i know how much to irrigate i mean instead of providing uh, 10 liters of uh, water per plant i will provide maybe 3 liters because already 7 is existing there is a cattle heat period checking if there there, there are sensors already placed on cattle wherein you know depending upon the number of steps it is taking per minute you can actually decide you can also assess judge whether the cattle is in heat this helps in artificial insemination of the cow or the of the cattle this is used big time in europe and us to decide the precise time because when insemination happens it's a costly procedure it's a time consuming procedure and if the insemination fails there a lot of money which fails so to 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 predict to predict the right time at which the insemination has to be done you know the various sensors are uh, deployed similarly wind speed i mean there is there is one very obscure uh, kind of a use case where we say uh, if wind speed is judged properly during the flowering time of any crop then i can also judge what is the level of pollination in that crop now level of pollination decides the level of yield i mean this is so precise if there is no pollination there is no fruit setting so if I, first of all i have to ensure that you know the pollination in the fruits happen like mango if some somebody wants to get a good mango i put provide all nutrition i provide all the uh, water required i provide all the care required but at the time of pollination which is a very short window of 7 days a huge wind uh, wind blows then what happens is few flowers don't get pollinated and therefore there is no fruit setting so it's very important at least during the uh, flowering time if i can predict uh, the wind speed or existing wind speed then i can assist the pollination manually i mean there are various methods and ways and methods and this is iot enabled similarly if i have to check the soil ph and ec and if i know what is soil ph and ec then i can change i can treat the irrigation water in such a manner that the plant roots don't get harm and uh the nutrient absorption is perfect uh, similarly if i know what is the rain levels and humidity levels in the atmosphere i can undertake many prophylactic plant plant protection measures in the sense lot many pests and diseases occur because of the favorable humidity or the rainfall conditions and therefore if an iot predicts this then i know what measures i should take and i can actually bring down the cost of plant protection or crop protection by almost 35% just by and uh, uh, if somebody can sense it to me so these are various use cases and all these use cases actually um, kind of uh, deliver billions of dollars as savings or billions of dollars as additional revenues in the crops if you uh, uh, if you want to take india alone um if i have to say iot applications as engineers you will all know that you know these are all uh, smart homes health cares and smart grids and autonomous driving industrial iot for manufacturing but most important which is evolving and going to grow further and future is smart farming in smart farming there are billions of decisions to be taken and a scope for millions of iot enabled uh, infrastructure or iot enabled grids required uh, to make that happen and now if you see the agriculture is moving more from uh, open cultivation to closed cultivation in terms of glass house cultivation or hydroponics or things like that the moment i am moving the cultivation from soil to uh, closed cultivation 
a lot more possibility exists for automating it and you know even as simple as uh, checking the stress levels of the crop and applying some nutrition applying spraying i mean human need not go into the crop and you know it could be automated to that to an extent that from sowing to harvesting it could be monitored all through iots and this has been already demonstrated um, in uh, countries like singapore in countries like japan in countries like china we are also doing a uh, little bit but we are not as advanced now if i say iot in agriculture where does it exist oh, uh, in india at least it exists for sure it exists but not to an extent it should have existed uh, we sure we are lagging behind but if you see we are monitoring soil moisture and soil nutrient status with some iot sensor today now the problem is uh, it is not that uh, sensors are available and we are not using in fact most of the sensors are yet to be created uh, for many of the sensing uh, many of the data solutions um, we have le let's say uh, irrigation triggers i mean depending upon the kind of soil moisture depending upon the kind of ambient temperatures uh, there can be irrigation triggers it's very simple most of the time farmers uh, unfortunately in india if you see the current in the villages happens in the night late night or early morning and whenever the current the power happens only then you can switch on your bore and you know go to the field and irrigate now this is technically and scientifically this is not the right uh, thing to do but farmer has no choice but that's how it is now what is the right right thing to do technically when the temperatures are rising on the day there is lot of evapotranspiration that happens on the crop that means what the crop sucks the moisture from the soil like a straw pipe in a coca cola bottle and throws out into the atmosphere as a vapor what a vapor this is called evapotranspiration now it is very important that when the temperatures are rising there the water should be made available inside the plant and in the night times or in the early morning times how much ever water you give plants don't actually suck it from the soil because the sucking action happens only because of the capillary action triggered because of high temp temperatures so if you want to push some nutrients into the plant the the capillary action should be on and when ca capillary action is on only during uh, the ambient temp when temperatures are high so if i know the ambient temperatures and the corresponding capillary action then i can actually decide that's a time for my irrigation and this way actually i can save water uh, than giving uh, water in the evenings where there is no evapotranspiration or a very less evapotranspiration most of the water uh, gets uh, below the root zone and the root zone is like in the top uh, um, 6 to 12 inches of the soil um, and when the water goes below the root zone the water is a waste it just goes it percolates down and it gets gets waste so if i am able to figure out when the plant requires water and provide water only to an extent that it wets the top 12 inches of the soil then i have utilized most of the water so that is where the sensing comes and that is where the decision making comes similarly the autonomous vehicles i mean driverless tractors driverless tractors actually provide more precision than a driver driven tractor uh and it is uh, it is well being uh, used in us already and uh, in india also a few companies have tried this uh, future is that we will have driverless tractors and uh, they are more efficient and more precise than uh, any human intervention similarly uh, the latest buzz latest thing in the ecosystem is drones and this is going to revolutionize the way we conduct agriculture already if we are i would say we are 20 to 30 years behind china in terms of application of drones in agriculture application of drones in general and application of drones in agriculture in specific we are 40 years behind us uh, in terms of application of drones i mean i don't, for various reasons we are behind yeah, that's that's the truth but now government of india uh, august 2021 they have released drone rules and they permit us to use drones uh, without much restrictions and uh, um the whole world is responding the whole india is responding well just that we don't have production ecosystems uh, we are still an assembly country but going forward we will have uh, we will definitely have uh, we will become the drone hub of the world and i expect uh, uh, bright engineers students like yours uh, um, 
just get into this uh, wave don't miss it this is a great bus that is happening don't miss this bus uh, deep dive into it there are many millions of use cases of course a lot of money but more than that a great amount of satisfaction you will have as career that you have contributed to something very very critical for the world not only india that is agriculture so uh, in fact uh, drones we are now deploying drones in in fact we are also working as a company on drones big time and uh, the drones can change the way we scout earlier i told you something called scouting uh, drones can change the way we scout drones can go into the uh, deeper parts of the farm and the places where you cannot access and you at places where you cannot access in terms of time like you know midnight if you want to capture some data during midnight then just fly a drone capture the data and come back i mean from the comfort of your home and based on this data you take decisions and lot lot amount of data can be captured at night also for the crop for the healthy growth of the crop and uh, we are doing all sorts of experiments to see that you know drone actually becomes a scientific scouting machine for us apart from spraying apart from applying nutrition to the crop uh, i don't know i don't depend on a labor uh, to do this job labor is still not very efficient uh, while it is not available that's a different story but it, even if the labor is available it is not very efficient drone does it precisely and exactly the same amount of um, input what i want to give if you really look at uh, the indian agriculture the crop protection chemicals there is a 35% extra usage of chemicals in the indian agriculture than what is necessary with the drone i can actually cut that um, uh, wastage so that's the that's the revolution that is happening and it's very important that engineers now uh, look at this um, iot and uh, drone based iots a dream I, i would say a dream smart village many people are talking about this already uh, it's very important that you know in a village all the farming and economic activities connected and uh, all the data is gathered to and provided to the farming society uh, for a collective action or an individual action and uh, with the uh, with the increase in iot's and drones you know this is possible and uh, this connected village and connected farming is going to be the order of the day in the coming days we will require we will more importantly we will require lot lot many more engineers not agronomists like me i mean while we understand the science of growing a crop but uh, the science of automating it and science of collecting the data and actioning on it the responsibility lies on the engineers i mean the bright engineers from electronics and communication mechanical mechatronics and aeronautical these are the guys who will uh, even a lot of scope for uh, the civil engineers to actually uh, do a uh, lot of contribution in agriculture this way as an organization uh, we are evolving a new concept called flying iots where you know we want we would load some uh, relevant iots on the drone send it fly it at different parts of the day and uh, day and night also to gather data and deploy some actuators to take specific decisions or actions around the data very important uh, my uh, concluding slide uh, to so, so to say uh, if you see india don't bother about reading this slide uh, i have already shared the presentation you will get all of it um, india 63% of the land holding is less than 1 hectares so if i am saying iot in us i have a different definition uh, of iot in india it is different uh, because the iot in us is affordable maybe because an average a farmer has 500 hectares and 100 hectares or 1000 hectares like you know 1 hectare is 2.5 acres so let's say 2.5 acres if somebody is having 1000 hectares of land we are talking of one farmer 2500 acres of land and you will find farmers like that in us i have been to us and i have studied uh, their farming tremendous if somebody is holding 10 hectares maybe he is only having a house a plot of a house i mean it's like that a 10 hectare is not considered a great farmer i mean technically he is growing for himself and he is living there it's it's like that uh, but the, uh, generally people have 500 hectares 1000 hectares and things like that and for them the iot definition is very different and that's a precise reason why whatever iot is being done in us is not simply copyable it's not control c control v for india it is 
different and now it's a time india is already uh, evolving uh, we the very bright students uh, from engineering already were evolving uh, small holder specific iot devices into the country and which is very very essential because it is doable china has done it with 93% small holders much uh, small holders in china is much larger than india it is 93% there and 63% here including japan which is 68% so these two countries have done big time iot already for small holders in india also it is possible and we are learning from there of course we have some political restrictions with china but still um, uh, if there is value god will not stop it and therefore the iot revolution and the drone revolution is going to happen in agriculture for sure now uh, i just want to kind of throw you throw some excitement to you if you see uh, the the iot contribution um, in india uh, i have picked up some leading research reports agriculture is still not appearing here i mean which is sad but believe me it's the time which is taking off now it will appear and a lot of scope for if somebody is doing a home automation i don't think <clears throat> there is no any more excitement there than doing some automation in agriculture the the there's the guys will get paid jobs start up startup ideas and lot of uh, uh, scope of scale up and lot of funding available in the sector and uh, if you see the world market also the agriculture still doesn't appear as a huge use case and going forward this is going to going to be the biggest area of uh, uh, business and engineering excitement i would say now um, if you see within agriculture the application wise i mean more or less it is uh, evenly distributed uh, right from animal tracking to weather weather understanding weather to soil moisture to temperature monitoring to fertilization monitoring to there are many areas and whatever areas are mentioned here they are not it they are only 5 10% of the area that is being measured today but there are 90% of the still areas where we need to deploy iots and uh, get it going so the scope and the width and breadth and width of iot is so huge it is still so huge in maybe home automation but i would say it's an infinite possibility in agriculture and somebody we are we as a company uh, are very eager and will be willing to guide all the students who would go wanting to pick up projects in agriculture iot projects in agriculture and you know create something of their own uh, as a company we are already training many interns and uh, we uh, we we support any passionate student who would want to kind of participate in this evolution uh, um, uh, any idea is welcome any support uh, we are willing to give so this is my message to all the students sitting here and uh, if by 2025 just roughly let's look at it this the iot market is going to be 3 trillion i mean today we are in 2022 in 3 years in 3 trillion and what is 3 trillion 3 trillion is india's gdp i mean it's the size of an indian gdp and also when i'm saying that the sectors like agriculture have only touch the tip of the not even the tip of the iceberg now imagine the scope the size the the scalability of this revolution uh, this revolution iot in agriculture in, in specific and the participation students can see for their rest of their lives and careers and if this is the revolution uh, i personally feel that you know uh, 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 the courses in engineering colleges should not be iot in general but it should be specifically iot in agriculture to drive that urgency drive that passion and show the direction to the passionate students so that the agriculture gets supported very well and this is uh, uh, i personally feel uh, this is a time when we should be talking about uh, uh, supporting agriculture uh, and this is the best way this is a kind of an a proven best way Uh, considering the experiences of china japan us and europe um, what iot can do to agriculture uh, we we will be more than happy to kind of show our work uh, and also um, guide students to see how they want to kind of build their careers in this area i'll show you a small video about what microsoft is doing and what i talked just now it's more or less that and um, it's an amazing uh, 
thing there. Uh, let me check if that is happening. Yeah, yeah, that is happening. Or or let me let me do the other way. Uh, is my thing visible? The video is not visible. Uh, now is it visible? It is. It is coming, sir. Yeah, I think there's a because we are on the net. There's a small bandwidth issue. It is uh, still booting up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me. Let me. Now, now it is coming, making waves. To feed the growing population of the world. And this okay, so we go like this. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Happy Earth Day. Today, I'm here to tell you about the world's food problem. The world's food production needs to increase by 70% by 2050 to feed the growing population of the world. And this is just to feed, if you talk about nourishing the world, the problem is even more severe. And the reason this is such a big problem is because the amount of arable land is limited. The water levels are receding. So it's like the green revolution problem all over again. How do we get to this significant increase in food production? The agricultural scientists have been thinking about this problem for quite a while. And the most promising approach right now seems to be that of data-driven farming. What we mean by data-driven farming is the ability to map every farm in the world and overlay it with lots and lots of data. For example, what is my soil moisture level six inches below the soil throughout the farm? What is my soil nutrient level throughout the farm? If you could build maps like this, this could enable techniques like precision agriculture. What we mean by precision agriculture is the ability to do site-specific applications. For example, right now, farmers, they apply water uniformly throughout the farm. They apply pesticide uniformly throughout the farm. With precision agriculture, you could apply it only where it is needed. Precision agriculture as a technique has been shown to improve yield, reduce cost because farmers would use less water, less pesticide. It's also better for the environment because you're not putting in more pesticides than needed. You're not putting in more nitrogen. You're not wasting water. The other technique that such maps could enable is called phenotyping. Just like you could do genotyping, you could do phenotyping as well. That is, if you could understand why did the same seed variety grow differently in different parts of the farm, for example, in the red or blue parts of the farm, you could then create new genotypes. This map that you're seeing here is one such map that we want to create for all farms in the world. So in the rest of this talk, I'll talk about precision agriculture, but you can see how the same techniques apply for phenotyping as well. So precision agriculture as a technique, given that the benefits are known, was first proposed back in the 80s. It's been 30 years since then, and the technology hasn't taken off. The biggest reason this technology hasn't taken off is because of the cost of existing data-driven agriculture solutions. Just to give you an idea of how expensive it is, I was at an expo at a university where there were several companies talking about the latest precision ag equipment, the latest sensor equipment. The cheapest sensors that were available there were five sensors for $8,000 and a recurring cost. For a farmer to, to afford that kind of equipment is expecting too much, especially when they don't know what is the ROI, what is my return of investment, if I buy these sensors, which are so expensive. That is the goal of the Palm Beach project that I'm leading at Microsoft. Our goal is to bring down the cost of these data-driven agriculture solutions by two orders of magnitude. We want to bring it down from 8,000 to 80. And I'll talk about a few techniques that we think we can get, that, that I think we can uh, help us get, us get there. Before I go there, I wanted to let you know that I don't have a farming background. My background is a PhD in computer science. But the first 18 years growing up, I grew up in India, and as it happens in India, people from India can relate to it. We used to spend, we are three brothers and a sister, and we used to spend time with our grandparents in northern part of India, in a small village in Bihar. And we used to go there, spend time in farms. 
by the way, I did not like farming that back then. Those were the worst four months of my life every year. <laughs> but the reason, but what the, the reason was that there was no electricity, no toilets. It was like going from a city to spend four months in a village wasn't exciting. But in a way, that kind of exposed me to the problems of agriculture. And that's one of the goals of the Farm Beats project as well. We want to take the technologies that we are building to the smallholder farmers everywhere in the world. So I'll start by talking about the US, but you can see how this relates to other parts of the world as well. So going back, the goal of the Farm Beats project is to bring down the cost of data-driven agriculture solutions significantly from where they are. And I'll talk about three challenges because of which existing solutions are expensive. The first reason existing solutions are expensive is because of internet connectivity. The farmer's house in this case has some sort of connectivity to the internet. They pay for broadband, they get one to three megabits a second, but the actual farm is a few miles away. The reason existing solutions are expensive is because the farms don't have connectivity. They end up using satellite or custom cellular solutions to connect these devices to the internet. So how do we bring down the cost of connectivity from the middle of the farm? To do this, we use uh, one of the prior research, I started researching on this concept in 2005 called the TV white spaces. What the TV white spaces enables is, imagine if you go buy a Wi-Fi router and plug it in your house. Imagine if you could access it a few miles away. That would be cool, right? As soon as you exit your house, the Wi-Fi connection just disappears. The way we do that is we took a Wi-Fi signal and put it in empty TV channels. This is over-the-air TV. So, you know, when you're uh, browsing through over-the-air TV on certain channels, you see some reception. Other channels, all you see is white noise. There's nothing coming there. With this technology, we were able to fit a Wi-Fi signal in those empty TV channels, the noisy TV channels, in a way that did not interfere with the reception in an adjacent channel. So you could be watching Channel 7 at home. On Channel 8, we could be sending Wi-Fi signals. And the reason this is so cool is that Compared to Wi-Fi at the same power level, in UHF TV frequencies, your signals go four times farther. In VHF, they go 12 times farther. And this is just based on pure physics. Once you put trees, crops, canopies, and so on, your signals just keep going through. In our latest experiments, we put these sensors in soil, a, a, a meter under soil, and a signal just keeps going through. So this was a technology we had built back in uh, 2009, 2010 is when the FCC chairman had come to visit Microsoft to see the demo we had put together. This was made legal in the US in 2010. Since then, we have been deploying this technology in several parts of the world, connecting rural hospitals, schools, libraries to the internet using this technology. Just to uh, recap, this is what the TV white spaces is in Seattle. Each of these holes there, these gaps, are what is the empty TV spectrum. And I already told you how it is better than Wi-Fi or any other technology that exists. In the context of agriculture, our key insight was that TV towers are where people are. In Rochester, you'll have TV towers. In New York City, you'll have TV towers. The farms are away from the cities. There are fewer people. So if you go to a farm and turn on an over-the-air TV, you'll find very few channels. Most of the channels are just white noise. The more such empty channels you have, the more capacity you have. So if you go to a farm, you have a lot of unused spectrum. We are talking of hundreds of megabits per second of unused capacity, at which point we are not only talking of connecting sensors, you could be connecting cameras, drones, tractors. You could be getting a lot of information that you previously couldn't get. If you talk to any agricultural scientist, the number one problem they'll talk about is data. How do you get data from the middle of the farm? With the TV white spaces, we believe we can solve that problem. Our vision here is just like Wi-Fi connects your house, this TV white spaces could be used to connect your entire farm. In fact, this is what we are doing right now in our deployments. We put this antenna in and miles around it now gets connected. You're able to get data that you previously just couldn't gather. So this was challenge number one. The second challenge, as I mentioned, what we want to get to are these kind of maps. What is the soil moisture level six inches below the soil throughout the farm? How do we get there? If you wanted to build an accurate map like this, you need lots and lots of sensors. You probably need a sensor every 10 meters. But putting a sensor... Yeah, uh, so that was the crux of... Uh, um, 
so that that is a i want to give you some glimpse of uh, how this uh, uh, pans out uh, i am open to q and a if you think you know you have some questions that you could ask me anybody would like to ask questions anybody having agricultural background especially my, my, maybe some students may have that background they like to know something about uh, these technical applications in agriculture they can ask a few questions get them clarified back side how many have agriculture background here can you raise your hand yeah yeah few many almost two. seven eight students are there sir is also there our hod sir maybe sir can pose a question sir only one question sir hmm. uh yeah uh when we look at uh, a farmer side suppose a farmer want wants to adopt iot for his uh, farm so the suitability calculation comes no sir so generally what happens is suppose i want to adopt iot technology for my farm land immediately the question comes into our mind is the suitability of iot is there any such studies for example i have a 5 acre land i want to uh, generally i will uh, crop uh, paddy paddy is the main critic so i want to implement iot in that particular paddy field so that some productivity will be improved not in terms of the sales all that yeah uh, i would say a good question see iot it is not about uh, that farmer will go and implement iot there are types of iot where a farmer can simply buy and place it but there are types of iot which has to be done at a community level for example uh, you are growing paddy and you want to understand how much water to give to the paddy crop for that you just maybe need to um, get the moisture sensor and place it and then based on the data given to you you can decide uh, how much moisture you can give that's a very simple iot a farmer individual farmer can do it suppose you want to understand the weather data the particularly the humidity the relative humidity the rainfall and uh, the temperature data then it is a community approach maybe one village can have that weather station there and all the villagers will have alerts on their mobile phones on the weather data and things like that similarly th there are iot's which are very small cheap and for a particular use case a farmer can directly use it or iot's which are at a one farmer cannot afford and don't need it because the same data is needed by other farmers it could be a community approach third level of iot is a service provider iot for example somebody wants to map the whole farm um, uh, and i find out uh, find out the stress areas without actually walking into the farm then a drone could fly take the either multi spectral images or rgb images and identify the stress areas and precisely tell the farmer that you know in this patch it's not working nice it this patch it is all okay now a farmer alone will not buy uh, the drone neither the whole community will buy the drone so what will happen is there will be service providers agronomists who will actually run the shop of providing agri uh, agriculture services so services companies will have uh, iot's in fact ours is one such company where we are actually building this services for the farmers but really drone based services so iot is uh, will operate at a very very different levels few small things uh, farmers will buy themselves some things at a community level and something at a service provider level so that way we will have to implement iot is that clear now sir yeah uh, anybody else like to interact with sir sir good morning yeah. am i audible sir yeah audible so this is dr arun from coimbatore mm -hmm. Uh, sir, I have a small uh, question. So you said uh, we are uh, behind 40 years from US and 20 years from China. So um, from technology for uh, agriculture. 
so who who has take uh, has to take the lead uh, whether government or uh, uh, community of agri peoples uh, from your view uh, which one is uh, uh, will improve the technology in agriculture sir whether the community of agriculture itself they can, they have to take the lead or uh, the government has to take the lead see government there nothing much with the government now they have opened the only lead they were supposed to take was open up the drone rules particularly I, and if i am talking about drones then government has already taken the lead but for iot what is the government has to do i mean technically i think it is the agriculture guys who will uh, talk about the use cases and the engineers who will actually uh, collaborate and develop those uh, engineering aspects so this is this is an ecosystem which is need to be known to people i mean the problem today is engineers do not know the scope and scale of such an opportunity i am not everybody knows it i mean if you see like just now he asked how many people have farming background maybe five six people raise their hand that they have farming background so the gravity and the urgency is still not known to the students i mean every student in an i uh, engineering student is very happy Uh, doing a healthcare project or home automation or uh, maybe something which is very urban types but something which is rural types it doesn't strike the mind immediately and i suppose now the talking has started in all the campuses i give, i keep going to many campuses where there is uh, a curiosity to ask about agriculture and things like that this will grow in i mean even the uh, agriculture universities it is like this there is a technology available and there is a use case these two should get married the guy who is facing the problem does not know what what type of technologies are available and the guy who knows the technology does not know the such a use case is lying there so these two guys have to talk to each other and marry and therefore um, maybe in engineering colleges a small orientation around agriculture and the use cases a small course can really help in all the engineering colleges because with the problem statements any anyway, agriculture universities are sitting on top of it they 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 are, they are only repeating the problem statements but some technology has to come for that it's happening slowly it will happen i mean everybody has to take the lead yes sir one more question sir and also we are facing a lack of labor problem in agriculture no sir so how to overcome this uh, labor problem labor shortage in agriculture labor shortage in agriculture labor shortage is there in everywhere it's not on agriculture and the worst impact it is agriculture of course because of some few policies like manrega and all those things uh, how to overcome automation i mean there's only answer i have one word answer i have automation and what type of automation automation will involve um, many things including iot and iot is the touch point where a uh, lot of data will be collected and uh, some actions will be done so we will have to figure out all the problem statements and uh, drive for automation thank you sir so if if we don't have any questions we can conclude the session sir okay sir uh thanks a lot uh, mr you have a question sir anjaner sir one more question is there yeah okay hello sir my name is sai kirtan i'm from snist mechanical department mm -hmm. and uh, i'm grateful to uh, by attending your session sir and i have one question sir how are you mapping the moisture and temperature sensors temperature parameters under the 6 uh, under 6 inches of soil by uh, using drones yeah so uh, there is a, there is there is a reflectance pattern which we use we use multi spectral cameras and uh, with moisture without moisture the spectral signatures are very clear and uh, we when we map the spectral signatures we know what is the moisture levels uh, roughly there thank you sir what's your name so sir anjaner uh, sir this is uh, saikiran actually they are doing a project uh, in collaboration with murata electronics mm -hmm. on uh, agricultural iot products so he is a part of that project uh, that is going on in this college okay so that's the reason why he had a very <laughs> good technical yeah. happy happy to know i mean i can discuss further i mean uh, we can go still deep dive into how to capture the moisture 6 inches and 12 inches Uh, but uh, being the forum a large we can only be that general that's it okay sir thank you sir thank you mr anjanel sir thanks a lot for sparing your valuable time uh, we very well know you are a very very busy person
and in spite of that i know you are love to interact and inspire the students has made you to agree to give this lecture on behalf of uh, the coordinator department of mechanical engineering uh, we express our sincere gratitude to, to you to accept our invite and give this wonderful lecture to us thanks a lot sir thank you anil sir thank you very much thank you bye